looks like this, the flow of people has slowed. Um, so why don't we go ahead and jump into our agenda, um, which is a little bit light today. We wanted to start with a quick overview of SRPC SEDS. It was officially posted for public comment. So um, a short status update and some of the dates here to come, but you know, we anticipate that being a relatively quick conversation. Um, and then, you know, the second item, Robin, is a little bit of an expansion on, you know, what you and I were chatting about a little bit, where you were thinking about, um, you know, how to track businesses, whether people use software or have systems that work for them. Um, yeah, I thought since we have a few face, new faces in new positions, um, that it might help to, you know, expand that a little bit too, in terms of, um, you know, just turnover, succession planning, uh, you know, what was left for some of you when you took over or what you um, would plan to leave somebody. Uh, because I think, Robin, that's also part of your question is what do you leave for Michelle um, or, you know, a, a hypothetical next person if they um, make that change in the future. Uh, but then, you know, we should also have a little bit of time if there's anything else going on in the wide world that uh, you all would like to discuss. So I think if I remember my order of operations right, I need to share first um, and then I can run through my slides. Um, so like I said, we, uh, wanted to just give you a quick status update on SRPC's 2022 update for our comprehensive economic development strategy, um, a brief overview of how we're going about collecting comments and moving towards adoption. Um, and then if any of you have had a chance to take a look and have things that you're just burning to share with us, um, you know, take a few minutes to talk about that as well. There we go. Recording in progress. So since you saw us last, you know, we had done some check-ins on at the end of March and the middle of April that helped us with some of our final research and conclusions. Um, really, we were just doing a lot of background work on the chapter itself, doing some drafts, revisions, edits. Um, and then we had also separately released SRPC's regional data snapshot in April. Uh, this is a new plan that we did for the first time in 2021. But, you know, in short, we realized that we collect so much different data for our transportation plan, our economic development plans that um, we thought it made sense to you know, pull all of that data and compile it into a single document all at once um, and save ourselves some of the time and effort of you know, pulling the same population data for all three of those separate core functions. Um, if we pull it once a year, we know where to find it. So our next step on the SEDS now, EDA requires us to go out for a 30-day public comment period prior to adoption. Um, and for some reason, it's going to make me double click on everything. Um, so that's where we are right now. The SEDS contents, um, we've already presented some of our detailed findings on the nine thematic chapters that we were pulling together. We also in this plan are including the resiliency addendum that is uh, in part documentation of the activities we've been conducting under our CARES Act grant and will serve as a final deliverable for that grant. Um, it also updates SRPC's priority project list that we discussed briefly um, when we were in front of you on the 12th. Uh, if there are any final changes to those projects, we can still make them, but we need to hear about it during the public comment period. Once public comment closes, 
Um, at that point, we are not going to take any other changes to those project profiles. Um, and then finally, the action plan and evaluation chapter updates some of our performance measures for ourselves um, and gives a status update of some of our action items. So like I said, the draft plan was released on May 6th. It's available on our website. There are also hard copies in the Dover, Rochester, and Summersworth planning departments and uh, public libraries. And we also had a notice run in Foster's on the 6th, but you know how much attention people pay to the classified ads. Um, so key dates the rest of the way, May 6th, we began public comment. Uh, May 17th is today, a brief presentation to you all. This Friday, May 20th, we will be presenting in a little bit more detail to SRPC's commissioners at the MPO policy committee meeting. We're going to be convening as the planning commission first so that we can run through some of these for them to comment. June 6th will be the last day of the public comment period. And then on June 17th, that actually surprised surprises me that date shouldn't be the same as May 17th. So let me double check. No, that's right, I'm being silly um, because that's the parallel to May 20th. Um, so on June 17th will be the June MPO policy committee meeting. Again, we will be separately convening at the beginning of that meeting as the commissioners for formal adoption of the SEDS. Um, and we're doing this a little bit differently this year. Um, in prior years, we had just released for comment and had all of our conversation with our commissioners at the last meeting. Um, but that really never left us any time to address their comments before they adopted. So we were always in sort of a weird limbo state of, you know, maybe we would try and make a few changes um, in response to their suggestions, but we needed them to make a motion to adopt at the same meeting. So by moving that forward a month, that gives us a little bit of time to make some of those edits. To submit comments, uh, my email address is the one that's officially been published. So um, if you want to send any of those comments directly to me, that would be easiest. But you know, Natalie or Zuzi um, should also be able to make sure that those get in the right place. Um, we're preparing a formal public comment log. So anything you send us is going to at least go on that log um, in some fashion so that we can keep track and make sure one, that we've adopted everything or addressed everything, but two, that we can also give our commissioners a record of all of the um, comments and input that we received and what we did in the document to address them. Um, and like I said, you know, we'll have some time right now if people had um, any immediate knee jerks. Um, if you all need a little bit more time with the SEDS, that's absolutely fine. Um, you know, we could maybe give a few minutes in a couple weeks, um, or like I said, just shoot me an email um, and let me know your thoughts. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing, but any comments, questions on SUDS planning? Robin? James, not, I'm sorry, not actually on says planning, but if, if I may suggest, put anything I've asked for on the agenda behind the request for the Patriots ad conversation. It's much more important and time sensitive. So just suggesting that that be a priority. Sure. Anything else on this before we change gears. Going once, going twice. Seeing none. Um, so Darren, that was 
your request and I'm not super familiar just at a glance from, of what you're talking about. So I think Mike, to, Mike's the guy, uh, Mike or Reed. Um, I can start if Mike wants to weigh in afterwards because I don't know what happened yesterday with the conversation. Um, so a fellow originally had reached out to us for to put an ad in the New England Patriots like annual pamphlet that they put out at Patriots games for the entire season. Um, it was originally they had given us some deal. It was a $12,500 ad for a half a page. Um, I saw that Mike had signed some kind of a, a document with them getting an entire page ad for $10,000. And the Patriots are willing to have their art department set up um, a meeting with us to do this ad for whoever wants to be involved in it, in the whole region. So, and this will be for the entire year of, um, of advertisement with everybody that goes to the Patriots games that gets these these catalogs. I don't really know what they, are they an annual calendar? What are they, Mike? No, it's the program. It's a program, yeah. It's, okay. the, it's the game day program. So you'll get there's eight home games. So there'll be eight of them plus if there's playoff games at home. So we felt like this is a good opportunity because, you know, a lot of people go to those Patriots games and a lot of people who own companies that are not in our area um, go to Patriots games. So it would be a good opportunity, marketing opportunity for all of us. And if we, the more people who go in on the ad, the better, because we can separate that $10,000 between all of us. Yeah. They said they'll bill it out. However, we, however we want. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, and I explained to them about, you know, we were thinking about having a regional ad and he said, they've never had that before. Um, but, uh, you know, something focused on the seacoast and just listing off who the, who we are and what we have to offer. And I'm, I think it is our demographic too. I mean, to me, it's about, you know, I, I'm a big fan of targeting and I think we're targeting who we need to. So. Yeah, I agree. So um, Dover's in, Darren, you're in, Rochester's in, Robin was a maybe. No, we're not a maybe. Did we're they no. say no? We're a no. Okay. All right. We so, can get 10. I, I put Paul DeShane uh, in the chat because I think Newmarket would be one of the ones that would, or uh, Super Newington rather, would be one of the ones that would really benefit from it. So I don't know if uh, Newington's uh, econ dev uh, folks would throw a thousand towards it. Yeah, I can't. I see uh, Hampton's not on here, but I think Hampton may go for it as well. Yeah, I can't say anything right now. This is the first I hear of it. Uh, I know our budget is uh, severely constrained. It took a $5,000 hit at town meeting. Um, so we're even debating, well, we're, we've made the commitment to, to do the uh, Business New Hampshire uh, ad, which I now understand is kind of shifting around. So, um, so I don't know where I'd find that money unless we don't do the business in the Hampshire ad. I, I would suggest you don't do the bits. I think uh, at Michael, uh, Mike can address this better than me, but I think you get much better bang for your buck and you're going for uh, rich people. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the folks that read this magazine are people that are in boxes and what have you that have money that may or may not be in our area. So it, it's very targeted. Like Mike said, I think it's better bang for your buck, frankly. And I would offer, it's my understanding and it's Business New Hampshire Magazine's understanding that we are no-go. That's not being discussed. They they think we're out. I thought we were out. Yeah, I had a discussion last week um, with their uh, Elizabeth? account person. Yes, right. Yeah. And she said it was still go, but it was being reformatted because some people fell out. And I talked to her yesterday, Paul, and for like a half an hour, and she understands us as a no-go. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I, I'm waiting for a proposal, uh, yeah. a reformatted proposal. I haven't seen that yet, but yeah. uh, she said it was still in the works, whatever that means. Yeah, that's not at all what she said to me yesterday. So just just food for thought, you know. Thank you. <laughs> all right. How long do we have, Mike? They want the they want the copy by in June, June something. And so, ironically, I, I think when I envisioned this ad, I envisioned something like we did in the business New Hampshire ad. 
<laughs> something showing where the seacoast is, you know, where, who we are with maybe, I don't know, a little thumbnail of, of from each of our, each of our, uh, our towns and municipalities. And I mean, cause we're not, it's a full page ad, but we're still, that goes pretty quick. Um, you know, and, and you don't want a ton of text anyway, you know, just, you know, something that's impactful and short, you don't want to give them a whole diatribe. So, but we, yeah, we we're on kind of the clock to get that approved and processed. Um, so would it be worth sending, um, James, the information, Mike, to send out to everybody that may be interested? Good in idea. This? Okay. I mean, so like, Portsmouth is in for sure, right? So it's Portsmouth, Dover, Exeter, Rochester. Who else? We got four for sure, right? Yeah, we're, Dover's definitely in, so. And Portsmouth's in, we're in, Rochester's in. If we could get, I mean, you know, obviously we can get five, it's two grand a piece. It'd be better if we got 10. I would think. Right. Paul, if you, after you take a look at it, maybe you'll change your mind after we show you um, what this is. It might right. be easier when you see it, um, how, how it's going to be laid out in the types of companies that have advertised it in the past, which are huge companies. Yeah. No, I, I, I certainly take a look at it. Um, is it only the eight, game, eight home games uh, or if they enter in the playoffs, does it continue? Well, it goes to season ticket holders too, I believe. Yeah, I mean, if they'll have the same program in the playoffs. So uh, I'm fairly new to the group, and I'm sorry, I don't know what exact ad you're talking about. Uh, so uh, at Durham, I don't know, Sally, I see you may be on the call, but uh, maybe someone could describe it or send a link, and I'll see if Durham is interested in it. Yeah, Joe, I doubt very much Durham is going to cough up the money at this late date. Just trust me on that. <laughs> I do. But if I it's something that have. happens in the future, we may want to more. I'm, I'm just finding out about it as well. Hello, everybody. We're new to it. Um, but um, I know Durham is very reticent about spending money. It doesn't have a lot of information about. And so um, definitely would we'll find out some more about it. Can okay. you tell us what your roles are in Durham, Joe and uh, Sally? I, I'm, I'm, I'm a member of the town council um, and I'm the former uh, chair of um, the um, Economic Development Committee that was, of course, sunsetted because of our, um, it, uh, we just weren't able to bring that group up to what it should be. Um, and we have also lost our Economic Development Director and we were encouraged by Warren Daniels to participate in these meetings so we could at least keep our, um, our foot in the game to, you know, a bit to see what's going on. Um, and Joe, he's a new member of council and I'll let him speak for himself. <laughs> well, that's it. I'm a, a new member of the council interested in economic development for Durham. Uh, my background is in commercial real estate. We hope you reconsider uh, not having an economic developer, by the way. Just so there uh, has been that yeah. uh, request and uh, for this year they've said no. So that's why I've come in to help Sally. We appreciate yeah. that for sure. Yeah, we're trying. It, it's a tough, it's a tough call. Um, Member, some business community members have asked about it, um, but uh, we have um, some private entities that the, um, the Durham Business Association and Celebrate Durham promotional group that we're trying to um, get more engaged in, in it. It's, it's a tough one. We can one help you. We'll Durham. help you. We, 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 yeah, yeah, we missed that's Christine why and, think, and she was great. Yeah, that's why I think Joe and I are here trying to kind of... Uh, to keep our foot in it and um because we know we're missing uh a lot yeah. oh. there's a lot of opportunity and it just it's never been able to get pulled together but um germs a tough cookie sometimes <laughs> mike do you recall <laughs> do, mike I, I seem to recall that the the billing wouldn't actually be till the season started like later in the season it's not yeah. it's not copy and pay in june it was like november december Oh, they, they will bill us whenever we want. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Cause I told them I wasn't going to do it to the next FY. So after July one, yeah. um, I'm not sure what everyone else's FYs are. Um, but yeah, so it wouldn't be till a fall sometime or whatever. 
Um, and they, as long as they get everyone's W nines, they can bill it however we want. So, so new market is in as well. Okay. When I talked to Neil yesterday, he said that we they could bill us in December or January. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, Marcus Brown is the gentleman that's supposed to talk to you about that, but they said they were very flexible. So yeah, I guess we we've had one or two people um, ask about the context, and you know, my understanding is some of this context has not come through this group. It's come through a smaller group of purely municipal people. So I'm going to back up to yeah, thirty thousand feet. Um, yeah, there has been. Uh, two different, I guess, marketing collaborations between some of the cities in the past um, for you know, ads in Business New Hampshire and New Hampshire Business Review. Review. Uh, I always confuse them. I still, we had a whole discussion about the difference between the two and it's still- Review is the newspaper, New Hampshire Business Review, Milliard Communications Business, New Hampshire Magazine is the magazine. Okay. okay. Um, so, you know, mostly the cities and a few others were collaborating directly on ads in both of those publications. Um, we have had some sort of offline conversations with that smaller group about you know whether or how those ads were going to continue um and that's where robin was saying our conclusion was sort of that um yeah at this point in time we were going to pause doing those ads as they had you know currently been done um so that we could think about you know whether that was truly the best place to be doing that combined marketing or whether there were other different venues that would be more appropriate, would get a better draw. Um, so this, it sounds like, is sort of growing out of that um, discussion and prior collaboration um, and specifically as a new opportunity to collectively market the Seacoast region. Um, whether it's you know, the Seacoast just as the label Seacoast New Hampshire or um, you know, something specific to whoever uh, joins the collaboration. Um, so it sounds like our next steps, we have some people who are tentatively interested. We have some people who are definitely interested. Um, Mike, it sounds like you are sort of the point person with the the most information. So if you have more details that you can send me, I will be happy to push that out to the entire list um, and tell people to reach back out to you. If you owe them copy by some time in June, do you think, you know, if people give you a yes or a no by the end of May, that works? Yeah, I mean, it's not, let me see what you said. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So good at full vision. Hey, well, Mike's looking that up. Hey, Robin, is it just your town manager that said no, or is it your council that said no? Uh, the everyone, the director of the department, the city manager, uh, no one thinks it's a great idea. That's a shame because Summersworth's really going gangbusters right now. It's a I know. Ridiculous. It's, it's a very, yeah. very small amount of money to get a lot of, uh, uh, it's a shame. I was thinking yeah. maybe just appeal. We, we, we'd appeal to the council. Uh, if, but if you say everybody's against it, then we won't. Yeah, bother. none of this stuff truthfully even goes to the council um, or the EDC committee. It's generally decided. And I, I, I guess there are some exceptions, but it's generally decided by the city manager. And the city manager just, there was no conversation. It was just no. the fiefdom. All right. Durham doesn't yeah. have a uh, town council meeting until June 6th is the next meeting. We just had one last night. So I'm, I'm sure there'd be no answer from Durham, even if it was possible with the, as you mentioned, a December billing. But if not this year, maybe get the wheels rolling and next year. 
Yeah, the uh, the deadline for the copy is June 10th. So probably by June 3rd, we'd need an answer, you know, to from everyone. And then by that time, we should have some sort of mock up. I mean, I can, if I have a tentative, a tentative sort of uh, group of people, I can have, I can have uh, my guy, Matt Wyatt, our communications guy, maybe throw something together for review uh, to see, you know, what you all think about it. We can go from there as long as we get something kind of hammered out by early, early in the week of the 10th. Thanks Mike, for doing this, Mike. Can I ask um, a clar clarifying question? Sure. As I understood the business New Hampshire uh, effort, uh, however many issues that appeared, uh, the ad kind of rotated on fo focusing on different member communities that participated. Will the Patriots ad do the same or is it static throughout the entire uh, season? No, it's, it's actually, it's their yearbook. So it's going to remain the same. Um, okay. It's, it's because it, it lists all the players and it has the schedules and all that. So it'll be the same yearbook that they get from week one to week whenever. This is a full page ad too. So we could actually fit quite a bit on a full page ad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we should, we should each have room to put a, as long as there's not 20 of us, we could each have room to put a little two or three line blurb or whatever. Are you thinking like a, a map kind of thing of each each's name to each town that you know puts yeah I know I know it's it's I what it's we great. railed against for the other one, but I think it serves a purpose here in that those people that don't have an exposure to the seacoast can see. You know, they may know where Portsmouth is, but they don't know, you know, where Rochester is, you know, compared to Portsmouth or whatever. Right. So right. My thought too is the other magazines that we've advertised in, in the past are basically New Hampshire magazines. So we're kind of keeping it in, in our state. It's nice to sort of branch out into other places where people are coming to games from all over the, all over the world, all over the country. Um, and that's kind of what our demographic, um, Darren is right. And I think if we get one, if, if, we, if this actually succeeded and we got one business to move to any one of our communities, that's a, that's a touchdown, I guess it would be the appropriate. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because, you know, that's tons of jobs and yep. assessed value and the whole thing. And it's for small dollars, you know, um, Absolutely right. the scheme. Yeah, I agree with Mike and, and Reed that uh, I, I know when I heard about the Business New Hampshire proposal, that was the first reflection I had is this is only going to New Hampshire people, maybe a few border uh, communities, uh, not knowing the full distribution of, of that magazine. But uh, yeah, having a regional impact certainly seems like a much le better leveraged uh, investment. So uh, I'll, I'll take a look at it and bring it to our committee and, and uh, try to get them to act in, on it as soon as possible. Thanks, James, are there, are there some superlatives about the Seacoast area about this in, in, in relation to the, I think, what, aren't we the fastest growing area in New Hampshire or the lowest, whatever, the highest, whatever? I. Uh, I think we had definitely uh, used the assertion that Stratford County was the fastest growing county in the state um, for the prior census. I haven't looked at you know, how we match up on, on 2020, but. But don't we have um, one of the highest per capita incomes like in Rockingham and, and like there, there's a bunch of different superlatives between Rockingham and Stratford that I think would be applicable to this. Yeah, question. we can. We can definitely take a look. But certainly, I mean, whomever would like to, uh, I mean, I'll send James what I have. I don't have a ton. Um, mostly it was just phone conversations between myself and Daniel and um, the copy lady. She sent me like a, a template to do something on. But, you know, it's it's it is you know it is what it is it's a it's the patriots yearbook we're going to get a full page ad i don't know where they're going to put it um but it'll run for it'll, it so it's the yearbook for the entire season plus playoffs and uh, i think if we could focus on the seacoast area focus on all our communities i think uh you know it'd be kind of cool i think i can get hampton um so that brings us up to at six or seven but who else should we target uh, 
Should we try to get like York or Kittery or no? I think we should do Pease. Yeah, Pease is a great Pease. idea. I can talk to Paul Breen. Sure. Sure. And then I put in the text new markets on board. Yeah, that's great. Nice one. So uh, I've had a lot of random conversations with Rye. Um, they're doing a lot of growth and development too. It might be worth, I don't have a relationship there, but it might be worth talking to someone in Rye. I can, I can take care of Rye. I got a good contact there. You got your fingers in a lot of pies there, Mr. Darren. Yeah, well. <laughs> Darren, are you doing Hampton too, did you say? Yeah. Aren't you Hampton yeah, yeah, High? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there. Uh, I think actually, um, the owner of, uh, uh, I think I'm, I'm bricking on his name, John Tinios. I'm bricking on his restaurant, but I think he might put the money up himself. Oh wow! Uh, Galley Hatch um, and popovers. Galley Hatch, right, 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 right. So, uh, so I'll I'll send James what I have. Um, and James, you want to distribute, and probably I'll need to know who wants to be, who can confirm by, why don't we say May 27th? People can, you know, gives you time to talk to the powers that be to see if they're interested. Um, you know, right now we're down to two grand ahead. A couple more, we'll get below that. So even if Durham doesn't do it, would UNH do it? Yeah, um, Charlie, Charlie put it in the chat that yeah. um, he can follow it up. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I mean, I, you know, maybe we can get the community college system to put in. I yeah, think. that's a good, that's a good idea, Mike. You know, just something that, you know, the, the more that we, the more mud we can throw is, you know, to, to show the benefits of uh, relocating to our area. Sean might be a great point person for that. I don't know if Sean's on this call, but he probably knows who's replacing him. Yeah, Sean's, uh, Sean said he had a meeting today. He couldn't do it. But uh, um, yeah, Sean has great, obviously great connections there. Yeah. And I think that would be kind of an interesting focus for the ad where we have not only communities, but the uh, educational institutions, employers, you know, the whole collaborative working together because that's what we do in the Seacoast. La, la, la. Yeah, the, the, the PDA too. That's a great idea by Chris. Yeah. And better ideas that Stratford Regional pays for this. The whole thing. You know, <laughs> Thank you, James. I love you, Feel a good effort. <laughs> Except for a summer's worth. They can't be mentioned. Maybe Rockingham can uh, kick in also. So, sort of on that note, uh, you know, part of that conversation too, we talked about the Cedars proposal that we put in. Um, and it's my understanding that they're now looking at, you know, it's sort of gotten pushed and pushed. Um, and our end date for the money, fortunately, has also gotten pushed. So right now we would have until May 31st of 2023 to actually spend the funds. Um, but, you know, last I heard they were potentially targeting a June executive council meeting with that, the problem being, um, I think the executive council meetings in June are something like the first, the 15th, and I don't know if they have another one, the 29th, which means that we're even starting to cut it close um, in terms of getting materials back from BEA to make some of those agendas. Um, so we're just sort of in a holding pattern there. We had talked, um, because one of those proposals was sort of the marketing aspect um, and trying to do marketing to businesses um, focused on you know, changes in, in employment dynamics or, or trying to you know, make the case for mar marketing themselves to employees as much as to consumers, um, creative hiring practices and all that. Um, so that is a conversation we anticipate coming back to. We just you know, need to get the documents in place before we can really hit the ground running on that. Jenny? James, I think that um, these grants might be on the next fiscal committee agenda. I'm searching for it now. Um, I'll let you know. 
The Cedars grant, you mean? Yes. My understanding was that we needed to have essentially a, a, an executed contract on our part sent back over to them so they could you know, formally approve the contracts. And I'm not aware that we've gotten anything. Okay, okay. Yeah, let me let me double check because I saw it I saw it yesterday and it looked it looked to me like I mean it was a whole long list of gopher related grants. But I know that's the case with us too, that that contracts have to be executed um, before they can go to fiscal and to GNC. But I'll double check. I'm looking for it now. Okay. Yeah, if you find it, yeah, please send that to me. I'd love to take a look. And if we need to you get somebody on a phone to figure out how we can wrap things up. We will do that. So Mike will send me the details on the Patriots um, answers by May 27th, we said. So it's a Friday. Anything else on sort of the greater marketing topic. All right, seeing none, we can hop back to the agenda. Um, and, you know, Robin, you know, this was sort of a conversation that you and I were having. Um, and I thought we could kick it out to the group and, and see um, what others had thoughts on. Um, but you know, it's my understanding that you're sort of working from you know, right now, most of your tracking of leads or, or you know, business expansions or things like that um, is sort of on a whiteboard um, and you know, thinking about, uh, you know, you've got it's something- very 1950. For, right. <laughs> so you've got something that works for you, but obviously you are, you know, you are on your way towards retirement and um, thinking about what you hand over um, to Michelle if she's trying to, you know, sort of keep that seat warm and, you know, leave for somebody in the future if they do decide to replace the economic development position. Um, you know, I, I know you're sort of thinking about protocols or systems or, um, you know, what you can get in place to sort of put things on autopilot. Yeah, yeah and, and Darren makes a good point too, housing opportunity. I have a comment on that too. Yeah, we can talk about this now. I think housing is more important to tell you the truth because this, we have time, but um, just real broadly, I would just say, as everyone knows, I'm leaving December 30th and um, we don't have software here and maybe offline I could talk to, I know Jen, thank you for the conversations I've had with you about your software and read. I think you and I have talked too, but, I guess this larger question, and I and I think the housing again subject is more current and important than this, but large, more largely for if I could tap into all of you, um, they're not going to replace me with an economic development director. They're putting in a, a planner assistant, which is very much needed here too. What's really interesting is all of you know I'm part time, and they are going to put in a full time person and. That may create some relief for Michelle so that she can pop in a lot of ways my position or this new person can. But more to the point is we don't have software here. As I've mentioned to you a couple of times, I have um, hate to belabor the point, so I apologize. But when COVID first hit, I hit the street and created an Excel spreadsheet of all the existing businesses in Summer's Worth. And I also have a commercial vacancy spreadsheet as well. And, I work very hard, they're not perfect, but I work very hard to keep those as current as possible. But what's really missing here, and I wonder if you all feel the same way, and again, we can talk about this another time. I, I, I come from the private sector, I don't come from the public sector, I don't feel I'm a good match for the public sector. And so I don't know if this is just me applying my stylistic approach to this culture, or if it's in fact a, a, a real, really problematic in that, we are very much geared to the property owner, all of our forms, all of our applications, all of our processes around the property owner. 
nine times out of 10, I don't know who the property owner is. I'm working with the business. We don't collect information about the business. We don't collect contact information. Uh, we don't have ways to communicate unless I do it and then put it in this very retro Excel spreadsheet that I've actually, I'm quite impressed with myself, have tabbed by streets. Um, so I think that's an E for effort, and I think it makes things functional, but it's not ideal because unless someone else is punching into that Excel, Excel spreadsheet when I'm gone and keeping it current, it will quickly become outdated and uh, not useful. And so I just the whole subject of business versus uh, property ownership, the whole function of co collecting contact information information about the business specifically, and then managing that database in ways that are functional to support the entire staff here. Those systems aren't intrinsic here because it's so focused on the taxpayer and the property owner. Um, so that's sort of my conversation if at some point in time. Maybe we should talk about housing because I do think it's more time sensitive. And I actually have a footnote thought on that. but. Um, at some point, I would really appreciate how you collect data and information if it's useful, and most important, how do you share it with the entire office and multiple departments who don't have access to, inf to information. I've created a file for every single business that I've worked with in Summersworth that now fills two drawers. And I'm telling you, if that didn't exist, that information would be non-existent nine times out of 10 because we're so focused on property ownership versus the leaser and the business. So I guess that's why the chambers were created in the 1800s, because <laughs> chambers of commerce are about the operational business and the whole premise, but that resource doesn't dovetail with cities either. And nor do I think that's appropriate, but just thinking out loud and sort of random, but. Why are you really not like being replaced? Well, I, I don't get this. Is it because Bob has such an ego, he's being threatened? Is it, is it, is it that, I mean, we need to get to the council. You're like the second fastest growing city I in the know. state, and they're not going to replace the economic development director. That's absolutely insane. I warned it Daniels. Makes no sense. Warren Daniels really concerned about it too, and others have expressed concern. But I would say here in the city side of it, there, there it really isn't that same sentiment. Here's my hunch. This is not a conversation that I'm included in, but uh, my hunch is there is a limited budget. And the staff should is a, um, should be double the size that a curtain is. It's it's created the size of when we welcome nine and ten new businesses a year, maybe twelve, another twenty three and twenty four a year, and I think the revenue has it matched the ability. So I think it's kind of an either or thing, um, and it's so hard to on everyone's behalf. I would say. Everyone is spread so thin right now because of exactly what you point out, Darren, the pace is staggering. And James is so right. Um, I literally am organizing new business. I wish I could take a picture and show you would all laugh out loud. It's a dry erase board based on districts in the community um, that people can come into. The pace is so crazy. I think it's a revenue thing. I think, um, I think that everyone is so short staffed. I think that there's only one planner here. It's Michelle. Um, and I, I just think people are trying to make the right decisions. And hope, hopefully this idea of a full time planner um, with that will relieve Michelle and provide more support um, will free her up for more work in this area. And again, if those that infrastructure is existent and those systems are in place, Maybe it will be even more possible for her. Um, it'll be really interesting. Does your so council the short understand answer is, what you do? Does your, does your does the city council understand what the economic development director does? I don't go to council meetings. I, it's not so a conversation weird. I'm involved with at all. Oh, you're missing out. It's a good time. <laughs> I know how they saved me. <laughs> Michelle does go to the council meetings, of course. Um, So, you know, again, I, what I'm interested in having a conversation about when it works is infrastructure and uh, collection of data and information about the businesses that we're working with and then sharing with that, so. Um, if I could just jump in real quick, this is Sally Tobias from Durham. 
just I, I can I totally feel your pain in that um, we had that we've always had that that um, challenge of, of finding the business owners we can find the property owners all day long but they don't mean anything and it's the business owners we need to get a hold of exactly. and we have literally uh, walked door to door that's what and I even did. then yeah even then it's difficult especially with restaurants um, the the managers aren't there you know it's it's an extremely challenging um, it's extremely challenging and it, it, that's what we need. And, and I don't really know how to go about it myself. Um, I'm, um, I'm on the council, but I would also speak to that aspect of the loss of economic development directors because we, yeah. we went through this ourselves. It's the economics. And to be quite honest with you, I feel it is a, a lack of real understanding about the importance and what the, what the different aspects of economic development are. They're just looking at, um, oh, who's going to bring in this big company in this one area? At least that's how we are in Durham. And, um, oh, well, we've got a new renter in there, so maybe it's really not necessary. And we don't really have the money. And, and at the same time, we have a strong group of people that are against economic development in town. So it's an uphill battle. Um, Durham, it was always very difficult it's almost like the dirty little word, economic development. And so we're very challenged and um, we're trying. I mean, I've, I've got Joe as a new counselor. I've kind of <laughs> corralled him. We are trying, um, but it's extremely challenging. I would add uh, to Robin's dismay uh, how to keep a database going. The only way I've seen it done um, credibly is if you have a business registration ordinance. Right, exactly, exactly. Because otherwise, I, I think as uh, Sally just said, uh, the businesses don't necessarily need to. The property owners, that it's a whole mechanism with the registry of the deeds and et cetera that, that generates that data. So you can have as much software as you want, but if you don't have any data to put into it, um, you, you're very, very limited. Yeah. Um, uh, as a secondary comment, um, I, I can appreciate um, the thought that Michelle might be able to fill your role to some degree, but I think that's a very bad decision because a planner uh, or, or whoever uh, has that title, community development director or whatever, when they're staffing a planning board meeting and everything, they got to be neutral. Um, economic development directors are advocates for business and they're, they, they'd be extremely hamstrung uh, and, and or risk um, NIMBYs out there to reverse a decision if it's believed that the staff was biased or, uh, or unduly influenced the, the planning board members. So, um, the, I, the business <laughs> registration ordinance, I think, is such a great point. And I, when I do leave in December, I'm going to write a letter of suggestions, and that will be one of them. But, you know, back as, as most, most of you know, um, I ran a chamber of commerce for 30 years and one, one of three chambers of commerce for a 30-year career. And, uh, again, having that software and, and having the entire system networked, among whatever it was that I had from three to a dozen employees so that everyone's accessing the same information as they're collecting it, whether it's, you know, it's going into the same, same database, if you will. And it's just so interesting to me that um, in a city that there is no business registration ordinance and that um, this information is not deemed valuable. It's just a, a culturally very different. Yeah, it's a tremendous mistake that someone's worth of making. It's just dumb. And I, I suspect the city council has no clue whatsoever. Um, I think Bob insulates the council. I don't care. I can say what I want. And that's how I feel. And yeah, he's just a problem. And as long as he's there, you're going to have... Uh, when I took this job, I, I told Russ, I said, I don't, I don't work for the town. I work for the businesses of this town. And that, yeah. was, the, that was the deal. And uh, that is the deal. And that's what I'm expected to do. And that's what economic developers should do. And you do that. And I think that, frankly, I think that uh, uh, makes Bob feel threatened. But enough on that. Can I talk about workforce housing? For yes, a second? you can. Thank sure. you. Um, is that cool, James? Yeah. 
So yesterday, I'm, I'm, I'm bummed that Chris got off, but uh, Sarah and I, uh, Sarah's organization, NHHFA, um, asked a bunch of us to come, uh, assessors, planners, economic development people, and we met in Concord yesterday uh, to discuss the 79E, uh, uh, Housing Opportunity Zones. And one thing that came up that was interesting was some of the communities that were represented uh, don't have staff. And they were uh, saying that they're going to have issues because it, while they would like to adopt this, and a, a, an example would be Jaffrey, who has a 79E, it did get voted on, uh, but they've not used it one time. Um, and so I was saying that I thought maybe the, uh, the RPCs could step in and be the role uh, of uh, ombudsman for this new legislation, and frankly, just 79E in general, and communities that don't have uh, staff that could uh, put together applications, review applications, put them in front of councils and select boards and what have you. And I, I just want to see what you guys thought about that. James specifically. Me, you're putting me on the spot. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm thinking, is that a role that you guys could take? Because obviously there are a lot of communities that could take advantage of these incentives, but you know, uh, volunteer select board members and city councilors won't know of it. They certainly don't know, I'm sure, that this passed this year and there's opportunities there. Um, and who else but the RPCs? Who, who could actually do that job? So I think the short answer is yes, but I think the actual answer is a yes, but. Um, you know, that's sort of what um, like Tim Roach was bringing up yesterday on Taylor's call about um, you know, some of the things that we're going to go through the um, you know, state invest NH housing fund, um, the municipal technical assistance grant thing that they're trying to set up. Um, you know, Tim was sort of pointing out, hey, if we can do a region of things under one thing, we might be able to take advantage of some economies of scale. If we're working with, you know, three or four small towns together, uh, about how they all fit and integrate with each other, um, you know, maybe that's one sort of technical assistance project that is actually informing several communities how they can rezone, um, and they're taking, you know, into account context from other places as well. Um, okay, this town has water sewer. You know, there's going to be some density here. We are sort of outlying areas to that. Um, you know, something like that, it, I think is definitely going to get a di different and potentially better result than each small town working on things independently. Um, I think something like, uh, you know, the ERZs or opportunity zone or, or tax incentive kind of stuff. You know, those are things that when people have questions, we already try to provide technical assistance on when we can. We you know, put them in our newsletters, we try to promote them. Um, I think the but in my mind is you know, we also have capacity issues. Um, you know, we, I think, collectively have been in a better place in the last few years in terms of you know, CARES Act funding that's coming through, support from Gopher to put some projects together. Um, but, you know, still the sort of committed, ongoing, uh, no strings attached money that we get from the state just for operating is $11,111.11 each annually. And that hasn't changed. Um, you know, we found more one-time funds, but there is still um, sort of nothing bigger that you know, has changed the ongoing funding structure. Um, and, you know, that obviously is less than you need to hire a person. So, you know, for some of these things, we, we could, you know, be the place where a lot of those things live. Um, but there is a cost to that. Um, and there should be, there should be, I, I'm not, I'm definitely not suggesting you should do it for free. I would think an administration, a percentage, uh, would be appropriate. Um, but you said, so you said funding and capacity, is it, is it 
So capacity is still an issue, even if the, even if the funding was there. Well, I, I think from my perspective, they're the same issue. Um, because when you have to grant fund, you know, all of your people, you're pulled on all kinds of different projects. Um, and, you know, for some things, you, you may have two or three things that live alongside, you know, I do a lot of our economic development stuff that's all grant funded, but I also am a contract planner for Northwood. Um, and there are times that those things balance and there are times when we get, you know, six applications in a month that I'm completely drowning. Um, wow. yeah, so, you know, based on that give and take, you know, I don't know that, for example, I would be able to carve out and say, yes, I can definitely commit to, you know, handling you know, applications for housing 79E for four different towns. Um, you know, that might just be the sort of thing that two or three people get trained on it. And, you know, when, if, when one of them comes in, somebody has to pick it up and work on it. Um, it's sort of the same as developments of regional impact. You know, we can go several years without having one of our communities refer one, um, or sometimes we get three in a month. Um, and that's something that you know, I know how to do those now because I've done several in the five and a half years that I've been here. Um, but you know, if somebody, if I was busy with other things or um, you know, if I wasn't available, somebody else would have to pick that up and you know, I think figure it out a little bit from scratch um, because they weren't the institutional person. So I think it would be balancing, especially if the money was just coming out of like percentages of the the deal or something like that, it would be trying to find that balance for who is going to actually administer that. Um, and do they have the, the time, the availability? Um, how, how do you figure out that certainty or, or uncertainty? So we should definitely pick this up next time because uh, Sarah, I just saw what Sarah wrote and she's definitely key to this because she was in that room and that was the question, how, how do these other communities do this? And we had no better, no better answer than the regional planning. Um, so yeah, we should definitely talk about it and certainly shouldn't do it for free. I mean, obviously. Yeah, and I know there have been other conversations about just, you know, what would it cost to keep, you know, a, an adequate funding level for the RPCs. Um, and all of those conversations were above my pay grade. Um, but you know, I think we would definitely be happy to discuss further. Uh, I know we're getting up on 10 o'clock. I see Paul and then Robin, um, and let's try and keep it moving. Paul? Yeah, briefly, I, I just go back to my previous comment. I think the RPCs have a role to play. Uh, in developing ordinances that promote uh, affordable housing and, and the workforce housing and those sort of things. But when it gets down to the project specific uh, uh, promotion uh, or advocacy, that, that's when they, again, many of the RPCs have circuit rider planners uh, who would then be at conflict uh, in advising their planning board while at the same time advocating um, you know, the 79E applicant. So there's a role to be played, but I guess there'd be some concern uh, that it has to be the, a bright line uh, so that the public understands uh, what the role is for each uh, and, and that there's no perceived conflict. Yeah, and I think this one is a little bit easier if you have a formal application process for the 79E, you know, you're still just processing an application. Um, and I think a, a planner could probably keep that fairly clear, but you have point taken. Robin? Just real quick, um, I've become recently much more aware than I have been in the past in terms of housing specifically, and this is a conversation for another day. We have got to start adding to our agenda, not just the subject of the need for housing, whether it's market rate, workforce housing, or affordable housing. I think and Seacoast communities, we have got to start talking about supporting infrastructure like water and sewer. Um, this has been a big topic among um, this community, and I understand that it has been in the communities that surround us too, 
it's no longer just about building the housing unless we can support those homes with the proper infrastructure the housing can't happen so and we don't talk about that and that's it <laughs> and that goes to the uh, fair distribution too if only the communities that uh, have water and sewer are the ones that are picking up uh, the affordable housing load, and that's unfair too. Um, my experience in Stratum, of course, I advocated for that long and hard um, in our commercial district, which was a mixed use district. Um, it's only been limitedly successful, if not at all. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, infrastructure is going to be, I think, a topic for discussion for a long time. You can't just keep building houses. You can't even want to or hope to unless you have the infrastructure to support them. Yeah, and I I was actually in a focus group for um, the UNH Survey Center that was looking at you know water quality in the Great Bay, and they were sort of taking that issue exactly um, from the other direction um, and thinking about you know, septics and building density and impervious surface coverage and um, I did bring that point up you know sort of that it you know from my perspective sometimes when I switch over to environmental projects I hear a lot of you know very specific but we must protect the water quality at all costs we must expand the the wetland setbacks as far as we can make them go um, and that just seems to be adding even more pressure on an already pressurized you know, need for real development. Um, so I was advocating in that space for more holistic conversations and hopefully we will get there. Um, but on that note, you know, I do wanna be respect of, uh, respectful of people's time, it's 10.04. So thank you all. Um, we can definitely mark the uh, housing opportunity zones as something to come back to you next week. Uh, or in two weeks, rather. Um, so we'll start putting that on the agenda and we will see you then. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.